Alright, so I was wrong. Now, my wife won't, my wife doesn't believe that I can admit when I'm wrong, but I can admit when I was wrong. So, probably two years ago or so, maybe even a little more than that, I did a video um, talking about maintaining your cheek well the entire time you shoot a group because in my past experience, um, which in my past experience, the first, the only time I've ever tested this before was with scopes that were much lower quality than the scopes I'm shooting now. I know this doesn't look like much, but this is a $1,200 F-Class style scope. It's a Weaver Nitrex TR2. Um, they don't make this exact model anymore. Uh, it's a 20 power, um, about a $1,200 rig, really good glass. Everything about this scope works flawlessly. So... I've never tested this theory on scopes of this quality, and I've got a few scopes of this quality now, and I've never retested it. So the scopes that I was shooting four years ago were not even close to the same grade or quality as these. So because of that, when I would when I would shoot a group and I would stop halfway through and readjust my cheek weld or something, I would notice a point of impact shift. Well, now that I've tested it tonight, I got home from work, and I was going to do a video kind of building on the previous video that I did talking about maintaining your cheek well because in that previous video I don't think I elaborated enough and I'm really glad that I didn't now because tonight I came home to elaborate on that do a video and I'm going to show you guys my results so check this out so I got six rounds loaded up here we're gonna do four in one group and then two for our parallax test. All right. Okay. Oh, there's three in one hole and then one. That's probably a good half minute. And that one was probably my fault. So that's a that's a half minute group. And the four shots. Now we're gonna do a parallax test. Now this thing is at exactly 100. This is my F class scope it's a really good scope really good glass this thing's eleven hundred dollars twelve hundred dollars i think that back if you were to buy it new um and these numbers are exactly right i mean i've tested this out more times than i could count so now we know the parallax is set right as far as being dialed it's dialed to 100 this is a 100 yard range exactly so by everybody by what people say we should be able to move our head anywhere on behind this scope as long as those as long as we have a full sight picture and the crosshairs line up the bullets should go to the same exact point of impact Dude, so my gonna... camera that was down range ran out of film or ran out of space before these last two went off i already know the result of this I'm very surprised. So, let's do this again. So now that we've got a four shot, that's a good half minute group. Now, let's go to the target right below that one. 
and we're going to do instead of having a perfect cheek weld lined up dead on i'm going to move my head as far over to each side as i can while still maintaining a full sight picture so i know my parallax is set absolutely perfect so I'm going to shoot one shot with my head as far over to the left while still having a full sight picture. So if my parallax is moving, this should throw it off. Okay. So that same exact point of aim, or point of impact. Now, I'm gonna go with my pair of my head all the way to the right. And still I have a full sight picture that this is as far as I can go. I'm right on the edge of not. Okay, that is a definitive result. I've done it twice. The first time my camera died and was out of, was, went out of, uh, and I accidentally let that, let that second one loose a very, a small touch high. So that's why it went above. But even the, what we were judging there was side to side. And there is no two ways about that. Side to side. And this load is dead on. I mean, I've, this load is probably one of my favorite loads that I've worked up with this with my six Creedmoor. And I've shot a lot of different bullets, a lot of different loads, and this thing is lights out. But there's no two ways about that. That with my with my with a perfect parallax adjustment. So right at 100 yards. This is an exactly 100 yard range. This is my home range. Obviously, my kid's stuff's in the background. Um, so right at 100 yards, I've moved my head from side to side, giving me just barely a full sight picture on each side. So if my parallax wasn't doing its exact, exactly what it was supposed to do, my bullet would be going to a different spot. All right, so this is a result. So... This is the four shot, the original four shot. I must have thrown one. Um, had I not, that would have been a really nice tight group. But this is the original four shot with my head lined up directly behind the scope. Um, no side to side movement, no nothing. And then after I did this four shot group, I shot these two, which you guys didn't see because my camera died immediately after shooting this group. So. I got the exact same result though with this that you guys saw with this. So I did let loose of that one and I even called it, I let loose of that one just a touch high, but we either way, we weren't going for elevation here. What we were looking for is, is there a winded shift um, with moving my head side to side with the parallax being set absolutely perfect. And without a doubt, there was none. So. All right, so there you have it. I was wrong um, with as long as you have a scope that is of higher quality um, and you set your parallax to your eye and it looks perfect and it's a good quality scope I imagine that they're probably all the same I will test this with some of my other higher end scopes and see if they do if they act the same way but I feel pretty confident now after testing this that they will so if you're shooting a lower end scope maintain your cheek weld the entire time um, if you're shooting I, now I still because it's habit of mine I will still you see me you guys see me shoot a group I'm gonna maintain my cheek weld through that entire group because it's habit and I think it's a good habit to have but does it is it completely necessary I can definitively say now no that it's not because you guys saw I shot a four shot group you guys didn't see the second two shots that I shot because my camera died, obviously. But then I went back, and just to show you guys on camera, I went back and got loaded up two more rounds, came back out, 
shot those two and got the exact same result. So doing it two times after shooting the initial four shot group, I think I can definitively say that with a higher quality scope, if your parallax is set, and this was set exactly at 100 yards, this is my 100 yard home range. Um, I have measured this thing. This thing has been measured more times than I can count. It is exactly 100 yards. That's exactly where the parallax was set. And I moved my cheek weld from one side where all the way to one side where I was just barely maintaining a full sight picture. I was almost start, I was starting to see a little bit of scope shadow and then did it the other side. And both those rounds went to the same point of impact as my initial group. So I think that definitively can, actually all four of those rounds because I did it twice. So I think I can definitively say that if you have a good scope, even if, now don't always trust the numbering on it, but if you look into your eye, that parallax is set right, you could probably trust that if you have to move or, or do something or change your cheek weld, that you're going to shoot to the same point of impact. So I was wrong. Um, I can admit when I'm wrong. Like I said, even though my wife doesn't believe that. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this is, this is a learning experience for me. I hope it was a learning experience for everybody else. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.